Welcome into our football recap live brought to you by Feldco. I'm David Kaplan and my special guest today, one of my favorite people. He is Kyle Long, the former Bears standout, all pro offensive lineman. He's got a very famous father, Howie Long, who my wife still, she's not the biggest football fan, but when Howie Long is on, my wife goes running by the TV and goes, that's my guy. She loves your dad. And then your brother was so kind. My wife just climbed Kilimanjaro and he sent her a motivational video. Hey, you can do this. Send me a picture of you at the summit, blah, blah, blah. And she made it. it to the summit. So it was super cool. It makes me so happy uh, that our relationship has gone further than you and I sitting in that little studio on Michigan Ave uh, yeah. talking, talking ball, you know, in the, in the weeks following my departure from the bears, you were the first person to reach out. It was you and it was Olin Krutz. Olin Krutz said, come work out with me. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you're ready for society yet. And <laughs> you said, come do some radio with me. And I think you'll really enjoy it. And I did. And I'm appreciative of that uh, to no end. You and I still talk. And uh, obviously, it's great to pick your brain about all things Chicago. But to have, you know, another layer of the relationship with your wife and my older brother now having that kill killy connection. Yes. Um, it's special, man. It's special. And thank God for tough people like that, because you and I can hang out here and just make sure the Wi-Fi is working. And, Correct. You know? <laughs> Correct. I'm not going on Kilimanjaro. All right. Let me ask you a question, because... I have been all in that you got to chase greatness. That's the word, chase greatness. When you decided you wanted to get married, you chased greatness in the relationship. You didn't just go, nah, she's okay, I'll marry her. That's how I felt about my quarterback. I felt like Justin was the fourth best quarterback in a four-team division. Good guy, good leader, tough, great athlete. Just not good enough at the position. So I'm chasing greatness. Did you feel like that was overblown? What was your perspective now that you can look back and go, well, they traded him away? I feel like in a vacuum, Justin Fields was a passable quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were times where he showed greatness and elite level skills and I think so. That's the vac. That's the vacuum. Somebody said that doesn't make sense. Chicago would move on, but you have to have context. You have to have perspective, and you have to take a look around the league and um, really study what makes these elite teams tick. And that's fantastic quarterback play. Whether the sky is falling or whether there's sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns, the quarterback play is at the highest level. What sets offenses apart and what sets teams apart. Um, from winning and from losing. And I think about a guy like Patrick Mahomes and everybody was beating him up all year and beating his cast of characters up all year because, look, he didn't have the star-studded receiving core outside of uh, Travis Kelsey. So um, he's had to elevate the level of play of the guys around him. And he has had to be the guy with his hand on the mast and can set the sails and can be the wind behind this vessel that is a football team. And when I think about what you're going to do in in Chicago with the quarterback you need somebody that can survive in any weather that can um, shape shift into any form at the drop of a hat and when you watch the Super Bowl there were things that the Niners were doing to Patrick Mahomes to frustrate him and it forced him deeper into his back that's when he got to the read option that's when he was able to get to some of the RPO stuff which was like holy shit this is a Patrick Mahomes we haven't seen in a while. Right. This is also entertaining. And I feel like that is what you can get with a guy like Caleb Williams. I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes. I want to be very clear about that. There are 8 billion plus people on the planet. There's only one Patrick Mahomes. There's only been one ever. Well, the one before him. So Patrick Mahomes Sr. and Patrick Mahomes. Those are the only two uh, that exist. I want a guy who has some of the traits of these elite quarterbacks. And when I think about the traits that Patrick has – that Caleb shares, it's the ability to get through times of struggle. And when you look at the USC tape, he was under siege every snap from the defensive front. He was somebody that had a game plan coming in, and sure enough, the game plan goes out the window within a, a, a half step of your drop, and you've got to got to improvise. You got to make things happen. He was great at improvising. He was a guy uh, who dealt with losing just like Patrick did in college. Patrick wasn't the Heisman winner. Patrick didn't win the national championship. People scratch their head at that pick. Um, but it's that experience that makes Patrick 
really impenetrable mentally, emotionally. And when things go wrong, Patrick's the first guy to step up and show the guys around him that the moment's not too big. There is no, our backs aren't against the wall. The wall is way further from us than you can ever understand. Let's just go beat these guys. And I feel like you need a confident quarterback, a leader, a superstar. People say, lose the Hollywood act. It's like, give me the Hollywood act. Give me the guy that wants to face the music. Give me the guy that says, you want to turn the TV? Turn the TVs up. Uh Turn it up. Um, because we need to hear this. Uh, and somebody who has a relationship with the fans in Chicago, that's immensely important. One of the big things that people bitched about with Jay was he, you know, he's not, he's, there's no personality there. We want more than uh, 35 yard laser beams to Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. We want more. Caleb is that, in my opinion. Uh, that's what you need, Cap. I'm excited about it. Um, and even uh, let's just say it's not Caleb and let's say it's Drake may even then great. Awesome. I love it. Another guy that had a dominant 22 and a 23 that made people scratch their heads, but life goes on. Um, and these are the best football quarterback playing prospects that we have out there. And that's the name of the game. You get the best quarterback. You have the best chance to win. Ryan Poles, who has been doing incredible amounts of homework because this for me, in my opinion, is a legacy-defining decision. If Justin goes to Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin unlocks him and he's yep. an all-pro quarterback and Caleb Williams bus, you're done. Well, great for – hey, that would be gr- – I mean, can you imagine – Can you imagine the day in October or November or whenever it is that Tomlin, you know, taps the right arm and sends old – one out there and we get to see a refined version of Justin Fields, a a version of Justin Fields that has been groomed by another staff that has been um, kind of taken under the wing by an organization, which we all know is a, one of the crown jewels like Chicago, but Pittsburgh, there's been some stability there and there's some, some carryover, some turnover there, uh, which is awesome. So Fields is going to get to experience that for the first time. Granted, they'll have some new coaches within that offensive room. The head guy's been there forever. Um, I think it's going to be great for Justin. Can you imagine the fans in Chicago and the fans in Pittsburgh that really support this guy, Justin? I mean, for all that he's been through, can you imagine the outpouring of support that would come? Uh, The cathartic nature of the celebration celebration for the fans in Chicago that loved him, hated to see him go, but we got to keep rooting for the Bears. But hey, look, the change the channel. The Steelers are on. Fields has got four touchdowns. He's rushed for 86 yards. Like, he looks great. Uh, I, I That's what I want for Justin Fields, but I want Caleb Williams uh, to win the North, and I want Caleb Williams to lead this team to the promised land, and I think that's our best bet with the stock in front of us. As you looked at Caleb, I don't know if you watched his pro day, and I mean, there's nobody rushing in, there's no defenders, but everyone said it was a really good pro day. The last throw was 67 yards in the air, and he hits Brendan Rice in the hands. As you've watched tape on him and talk to people, give me your scouting report on this guy. He is a chameleon. Um, he is as gifted throwing the football as anybody I've seen in recent memory from any angle, from either side of the line of scrimmage, left or right. Uh, He's somebody that can evade the pocket if necessary up through the B gap out the C gap, or he can go blind out the back door, which we saw guys like Russell Wilson do for so long in this league. Um, These are abilities that just make you that much more dangerous. And a lot of these things, there is, you know, overlap with Justin Fields there. I mean, Justin Fields was the best athlete on the field, but in my opinion, Caleb Williams is the most creative player on the field. And that's what a guy like Patrick relies on. A guy like Josh Allen relies on is when the things break down. Well, we sent the two Blackhawk helicopters to go get Osama bin Laden. We had a great game plan, right? Mm -hmm. We had a first 15. We said, we're going to go out. Boom, boom, boom. These are the places we're going to go. And then there was an issue with the first chopper. So we said, we had to to get to the second plan. And I feel like not only does Caleb Williams give you the best first plan, but if that chopper goes down, Caleb Williams is the guy you want. <laughs> uh, I, I think, in my opinion, with the defense that Matt Eberflus has constructed, with the way that this group has played, with the guys they have under contract currently, the missing piece, in my opinion, is a quarterback. Now, look, we've got to talk about the ninth pick. We've got to talk about a bevy of other decisions. But first and foremost, we've got to get this quarterback. 
Okay, so let's assume the medicals go well. Polls talk today. He said, we've done a lot of homework on Caleb Williams. He said, we have not found one person, not one, that doesn't tell us he's an amazing teammate. He is absolutely the real deal as a leader. Holds you accountable, this, that, and the other thing. He's been pretty open about what he thinks of this kid. So if you take him and you're sitting there at nine, for me, if Joe Alt is still on the board, I'm taking the left tackle. No disrespect to Braxton Jones, but I'm chasing greatness, and I can kick Braxton inside. I could do a number of different things. What would you do if there was a receiver there like Neighbors or Odunze? Well, I really like Odunze. Um, I do, and I'm going to get to your Joe Alt situation here in a minute, but there's only so many opportunities throughout the course of history for a team to have picks in these spots yep. and there's teams that have gotten it right. And there's teams that have done it incorrectly. And I listened to Pete Schrager, who is a brilliant football mind and somebody that I enjoy listening to a lot on the NFL network. And he was reminding all of us of the Ravens draft with Jonathan Ogden and Ray Lewis. You want cornerstones for your franchise. You want to find a guy that says he's going to be here 10 plus years and you want as many of those guys on the field as you can. So, if the receiver has a question mark, you know, if neighbors has a question mark, if a has, a, I'm not saying they do, um, you go with, you find the guy who doesn't have the question mark. You, you, you accrue, you accumulate the most talent you can. It's the same argument that the fields people were saying, you know, build, uh, you know, the hall, build the, the team, build the, build the roster. If you think it's a tackle. And if you think having Braxton Jones on the bench or maybe somewhere else on that offensive line will help your team be better. Great. If you think at nine Roma Dunze, uh, can be a guy that will show up and show out year in, year out, like a Mike Evans. Great. You know, fabulous. Uh, I, I think you put that in conjunction with DJ Moore, who has the ability to do so many things on the outside. He can line up outside, inside, short, deep routes, everything. And then Keenan Allen. And Keenan Allen, I heard Ryan Poles talk about what better way to get your quarterback comfortable than to have a receiver like Keenan Allen who understands timing, rhythm, being in unison with the quarterback. He's a guy that got Justin Herbert as dialed in as anybody as a young quarterback. So I look forward to that. But if I'm, if I'm the Bears, I'm going with – Adunze at the ninth pick. I'm going to say we're going to commit to being a a rock star offense. We are going to beat you with Johnny's and Joe's, and it doesn't matter what we run. Line up, and good luck. And with a guy like Adunze at nine, it gives you just another option for your young quarterback to feel comfortable. Um, we had the tight end from uh, Detroit, Sam Laporta. He was on my mm -hmm. older brother. Chris's podcast, Greenlight Podcast, and he was talking about his job is to make his quarterback feel comfortable. His job wasn't take nine steps, get here, do this. I want my quarterback to feel comfortable. And that's what every guy in that offense should do uh, from, you know, from the right tackle to the left tackle, from the X receiver to the Z receiver. That should be the goal. And whether it's a tackle with Joe Alt, who is 6'8 and moves like a dancing bear, or it's Roma Dunze, who is a matchup nightmare, uh, Go get you one. Go get you a, a guy who can go and play immediately and have an impact on your football team, whoever it is you think that is. If you were sitting there and Adunze and Alt were there, or they said, your phone rang and, hey, man, give us Carolina's second-round pick next year and you can move up two slots and get Joe Alt, would you do that or do you feel like with what he's spent and what he's added this year, the offensive line is in a good enough position. I think the offensive line is not in a terrible position, um, right. but I always think it's nice to have more great players. Um, yeah. When I was in Kansas City, uh, they signed me at right guard. I was a starting right guard through the spring. Um, I got landed on by Chris Jones the last day of OTAs, and Trey Smith jumped in as the starting right guard. He is now a two-time Super Bowl champion and a pro bowler. It's always nice to have good players on your team. Um, yeah. And these are the luxuries that smart GMs and head coaches have afforded themselves with. They've gone and they've picked football players. Like you look at the the Cleveland, the two first round picks in Cleveland. It was Johnny Manziel and it was Gilbert. And they're two guys that aren't in the you know aren't in the league anymore, to my knowledge. Uh, but you know, franchises like the Ravens have, have hit home runs with it. So can the Bears? take advantage and make some hay on a really, really unique opportunity. This isn't a, a, a number one pick that we have earned through our performance. This is a business dealing number one pick. This is a smart move by Ryan Poles. I'm excited about the one, the nine, and all the free agency moves. 
in terms of building an offensive line, I, uh, Courtney Cronin was on with us today, and she does such a good job reporting. She believes Ryan Bates is the starting center, not Coleman Shelton, the kid they brought over, who started 30 freaking games the last two years for the Rams. And I'm like, God, I want the kid from Oregon, Jackson Powers Johnson. He's a stud. Stud! He is a stud, but I think, I think, look, I think Jackson Powers, John, some guys transcend scheme. You can put them in any scheme and they're going to be okay. Um, more than okay. And I think JPJ is one of those guys going back to the offensive line discussion. You get a guy like Caleb Williams, you bring in these receivers, you're going to have wins early in the passing game in the route tree. The offensive line isn't asked to do as much, particularly on the edges. You don't need to go get a world beater um, at left tackle or at right tackle unless you really are trying to have that be your MO. Do you want your ID- uh, your identity to be, we're going to pound you up front? I mean, which is all well and good. If that's what you want to do, then great. But setting yourself for set up, setting yourself up for Caleb Williams and putting your offense in position to be a quick strike, spread the feel out and then hit them downtown Julie Brown every once in a while, you go with receivers. You give yourself options. They can only scheme up so many of your guys. When you got to Kansas City, because I knew you here, then we did a little radio, you were skinny in the studio, and you went, I'm getting back up. You went from, correct me if I'm wrong, 332 to like 265, back up north of 300, and you went, I'm going to play. And you were in Kansas City. What is it like walking into that room with that coach, with that guy at quarterback, and that guy at the Cheetah was still there? And yeah. what is that like? Uh, it was it was a dream, honestly. It was a dream for me to get to step into the Kansas City locker room and you know, you dap up Patrick Mahomes as the first guy you meet. He's bigger than you think, and he's way cooler than you think. And then you get to see these motherfuckers practice. And it's like, right. oh, it's like oh, my God. And Travis Kelsey, and he's just as goofy every day as he seems, uh, you know, on his podcast and on the interviews. And I, I would say that Andy Reid has done a fabulous job uh, uh, acquiring a bunch of misfit toys and and making them all work really well together. Um, he is the the orchestrator of a, a brilliant symphony of juvenile delinquents, I would say. Uh, you know, and and guys like Chris Jones, uh, you know, they're just matchup nightmares. Travis Kelsey, you can't guard him. Patrick Mahomes, there's no defense that you can throw in front of him that's going to stump him. Um, so bright guys, confident guys. And then just the understanding that we're not here to just win games. We are here to win the Super Bowl. Yep. And one thing that stood out to me, I was, I was watching the Cowboys and, you know, how this playoffs, these playoffs played out. And when the Cowboys took the NFC East, you might remember this, Dak and CeeDee Lamb were on the field and they were handing out hats to everybody. It's a hat and t-shirt game. They said, we don't want those hats. And they said, why not? And they said, we want the other hats which is the, you know, the Super Bowl hats. Right. When I was in Kansas City, I've never seen a group of guys celebrate harder than to beat the Denver Broncos and win the AFC West for the dozenth year in a row. These guys take pride in winning all the time, everything. Even when – if you don't think that Lamar Jackson winning the MVP this year pissed off Patrick Mahomes, then you got Patrick <laughs> Mahomes wrong. Uh, You know – I asked the trainers when I got there, I was like, what is Pat like? And they're like, here's what Pat's like. We won the Super Bowl. Lamar won the MVP a few years back. He was like, and Patrick was bent out of shape. He doesn't have anything against Lamar, but he's like, MJ, you know, right. nobody deserves this except for me. Correct. That's what it's like. Andy Reid giving those guys the freedom to be themselves. Friday practice. We're going against coaches and penny wearers you know what i mean like it's a fast friday nobody's getting hit kelsey catches the ball on a crossing route mccall hardman runs underneath of him right here kelsey pitches him the ball mccall hardman pitches somebody else the ball on the way back to the huddle they're playing rugby and andy lets it happen until the ball hits the ground but when the ball hits the ground the rep has been ruined the play you know what i'm saying like he is all about creativity he is all about vibing off of one another and he said look monday through saturday those are my days sunday is your day and that was a point of emphasis 
we had so much fun going to play for him. Um, I was so lucky to be able to sit in his meetings. It was just obvious to me that, you know, he's a Hall of Fame coach. He's one of the best to ever do it. Uh, it was it was awesome. Andy Heck, the offensive line coach there. Former he's Bear. A, he, he's a microcosm of the things that make Kansas City so successful because it's a bunch of guys like Andy Heck who are prepared, confident, and willing to work hard. So you walk in there and you're a former Bear, and I remember covering the game. I'm going to do the post game. Chiefs at Bears and Patrick Mahomes, they beat the crap out of the Bears, and he's coming off the field after a touchdown. One, two, three, four. Counting to ten where he was taken. Like, that dude gets pissed off, and he's a Super Bowl multi-time. The Bears are awful, and it still pisses him off, doesn't it? So that's that's what makes the great ones great. Um, and, you know, I could think of a dozen stories of Aaron Donald who just retired. And yep. he'll go down as one of the best to ever do it, if not the best. And that's a guy who you just didn't want to challenge. You didn't want to have to because you knew it was going to come out of the box. And that's like Patrick when when there's still time on the clock and you're still a possession or two behind or three, four sometimes. You just never know because that guy gives you the chance. And that's why I'm so excited about Caleb Williams coming to Chicago because we haven't experienced something like that. We have not experienced something like that. And, we, and we're tired of seeing other people experience it. Yes. Is Did Patrick ever say anything to you about the Bears? No, we had our conversations about Nagy. When I first got there, you know, I'd be like, you had Nagy, you know? And he'd be like, yeah, Nagy. I'd be like, I had Nagy. I'd be like, Nagy hates me. But now Nagy and I are buddies, and Nagy's his coach again, and I saw him a couple months ago. It's just – this game is just a big fraternity, man. It's like, don't burn bridges because they're going to be somewhere else someday. Don't burn bridges because just don't be a dickhead. But right. they're going to be somewhere – I was talking to a center from a team that's not the bears and I'm not going to say what team and mm -hmm. he's on his way out of, of that, whatever building he's in, he's on his way out. Mm -hmm. and he didn't get to play last year. And he said, you know, on my way out, I, I, I've got this to say and this to say to the coach. I said, don't do that. Uh, because if you knew the team that he was playing for, you'd say, do not do that because right. uh, all these guys are going to have coaching jobs. In five yes. Years. They're all going to be on different staffs. So smarten up. Uh, take the high road. any bridges. Yeah. Right. Take the I wish road. I would have given myself that advice early on, but here we are. Okay. So back to our beloved bears, they go out and sign Deandre Swift. They trade for Keenan Allen. They add Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton and a couple other offensive line pieces. They have DJ Moore. They have Cole come that they have Gerald Everett and they got Caleb Williams coming in. So do they need to go out and sign? Cause Tyson Bajan is the only quarterback. He and Brett Rippon was signed, I think, more as a yep. practice squad. Guy. Would you sign like a Ryan Tannehill to have a veteran in the room or not necessary? Who's with C.J. Stroud? Uh, Case Keenum. I should have known that, but I don't know, man. It's uh, It's always beneficial to have an older guy in the room. It's never an exact science of – we're going to bring in Ryan Tannehill and he's going to impart 12 years of wisdom on our guy. You know, right. it's, it's, it's as much as the giving portion as it is the receiving portion. You know, I don't right. know if Caleb and X are going to get along or Drake and Y are going to get along, but right. <clears throat> it was as good for me as anything in the league. When I stepped into an offensive line room and I had 40 years of guys with me um, from Roberto Garza, Jermon Bushrod, Matt Slauson, Eben Britton, the name, the, the list goes on and on. Um, so yeah, I do think it's important to have somebody and, and they will get somebody. I'm sure there's somebody, uh, that'll relish the opportunity to work with a guy like Caleb Williams. In terms of being a bear. Oh, I talked to Olin today. Oh, and he said to tell you hello, by the way, Olin my said, guy. dude, I'm from Hawaii and I made Chicago my home. He said, there ain't a lot like Hawaii's here and Chicago weather there. But he said, once you're a bear, man, it's it's in you forever, and you want the franchise to do well. It, your dad's in the Hall of Fame. Your brother's won Super Bowls. You've had an amazingly good career. Doug, do you still feel like you're a bear? Oh, I am a bear. Um, without, without a doubt. When I was in my purest form, 
I wore navy and orange and I wore 75 and I looked out for my teammates and they had my back too. And there was no honor that was greater than being healthy and being prepared and being hardened by my teammates and letting some guy in another jersey feel me. Let's go. Game on. All right, we had news today besides the Bears. We'll yep. get back to them in a minute. No more hip drop tackles. Uh, that's out. Now there's going to be maybe new kickoff proposals. What is your take on the hip drop tackle? I'll say this about football in general. It's always changing. Yes. Uh, n- nobody has divorced it yet. Uh, the other thing won't. is there's, there's only one of these plays a game, the hip right. drop plays statistically. Right. Now the number's getting better as we go, or the number's getting larger as we go of occurrences. And I'll say this about the hip drop tackle. Guys get hurt in a way that's more severe than other hits with the hip drop tackle. Mm-hmm. Um You know, in the old days, guys used to cut on the backside of offensive line. You know, if I couldn't reach you, if I couldn't get between you and the ball, I would just dive at your fucking knees, Cap. I'd say, good luck. (laughs) Right. Good luck. And then if I couldn't do that on my own, I'd have my buddy that's on the other side of you put his hand out to engage you, and then I'll cut your fucking legs so you won't defend yourself. Right. So they banned that, and a lot of people complained about that. And the game moved on, and we forgot about it. This is another one of those things that we won't really remember two years from now, three years from now. And also, it shows me that the league is serious about taking care of their players. Um, And I know that the NFLPA didn't like this ruling and they were against it, but I'm a player. I come from a house where we're all football players and Mm -hmm. I probably don't have the same opinion as them because Chris Mm -hmm. and I never have the same opinion. (laughs) But I think it's good for the game. It's good for the game because it'll keep the okay. The stars get the ball more often than the the Jags. Okay, right? Right. Stars get the ball more often than the Jags. So the stars get tackled more often than the Jags. Stars also make guys miss, which mm-hmm. leads to a one on one situation, which leads to these dire situation horse collar tackles or dropping on the legs that's when guys get hurt man and when you have these players get hurt then the points go down and when the points go down the viewership goes down when the viewership goes down the money goes down when money goes down guards and tackles don't get paid as much so what i'm here to say is it's great for business and if you're a fan of the nfl and you're a fan of entertainment you should kind of support this because your favorite players are going to be on the field more um And that's really all I have to say about that. And there are a a dozen ways to skin a cat as it pertains to tackling somebody. The same as when it comes to blocking somebody. I laid out one example of something they took out of my tool belt. And my game Mm -hmm. didn't really change as a result of it. Guys are going to learn. Guys are going to make tackles. And uh, I think guys are going to be healthier as a result of it. Your brother pulled you out of a fight in a pile. (sighs) And yeah. somebody tweeted at me when you and I were tweeting this morning and said, oh, I remember when his brother yanked him out of a pile, there was a fight going on. The relationship that you and Chris have, is it at all similar from maybe, you know, them, I don't know those two Kit, Travis and Jason Kelsey. Is there any similarity like that? It's funny that you say that. And Chris and I have never talked about this, but like I came out with Travis Uh We were at the combine together, so I've known him forever. And we were both guys who had a lot of private meetings with teams, Uh Uh, you know, a lot of questions to be answered. And we were both guys who struggled in college with some off the field stuff that we got together and figured out how to become adults. And Chris and Jason are two guys who are leaders, who Uh are captains, who Uh are the archetypical men. These are just these are dudes and by dudes i mean they're guys you want on your team and you want me and travis on your team as well but you want jason and chris to be at the front of the room (laughs) right you know uh and i do think that the difference between those guys is as vast as the difference between chris and i uh although we're not the exact same the two sets of brothers but there's a lot of similarities there i will say um yeah yeah super from my seat Yeah, there's a lot of similarity. First of all, elite football players at both levels. You have 
your dad, who like he's at a totally different level. Like Chris was the second pick in the draft, right? Yeah. Second. What number did you go? 20. Okay, 20. You were an all pro. Chris has won Super Bowls. Travis is amazing. Jason is an amazing football player. And all together, you don't get to the level of Papa Long. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, and it's you'd be a fool if you set out with that as your destination and your life GPS because right, you're, you're just going to be there. frustrated the whole fucking drive. Right. Uh, like, I would, shit, you know, they they say shoot for the moon, you'll land among the stars, and you know, I've nestled myself into the uh, the starry night, and it's a pretty chill uh, environment. When when he watched you play, or he's in the studio, or Chris is playing, was he someone? I don't get involved. I let their coaches or. Yellow, uh, what the hell were you doing on that play? What was that situation like? Dad always has worn multiple hats for dealing with Chris and I, uh, as it mm-hmm. pertains to football, as it pertains to being a dad, as it pertains to being a you know anything. Uh, but if I reached out, he would answer, and if he answered, I was going to get his mm-hmm. two cents. And sometimes it was more of a buffalo nickel and. Uh-huh. We would have a lot of late night talks about football. And one thing that uh, stood out to me is he would type me these really long texts with, uh, it would be like 76 dash and then like a couple sentences. And then it would be 58 boom, 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 down the line. And you'd get every single guy that you played against and he would watch the tape. <laughs> he watched more tape than I did when I played. Wow. I didn't, I hated watching tape because it was like watching a highlight reel for these defensive linemen. You mm-hmm. go to an offensive line room and the biggest issue is lack of confidence, real confidence. You get guys that act big and tough and boisterous. And some of that is rooted in lack of confidence, but I think some of it stems from the films that we watch in those rooms, because mm-hmm. all we do is watch defensive linemen, gape offensive lineman all day Mm -hmm. it's just a Mm -hmm. porno tape for defensive linemen so (laughs) as an offensive lineman who was trying to come into the game with the with the proper equilibrium mentally i would say i'm gonna watch his i want to know what they do i don't want to see them do it a million times right uh because then you start to believe you're fighting john wick correct Uh, i got no chance here so dad did a good job of not overloading me with the fear stuff, but like, you know, two steps up and under on the third step. When he lifts that inside hand, watch it. He's coming for the hump inside. If he does the hand up on the first step, he's feigning. He's going outside chop rip. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like he had, cause he's done all this stuff so many times as a lineman, right. he knows what these guys are trying to set up. So really when I started playing football, he said, you're going to play a line. I can help you. And it was true. I mean, and it held true till I was 32 years old. Do you miss it? Oh, every day. Really? Even with all the injuries, you still miss it. No better way to treat your body than to throw a helmet on it and launch yourself at somebody. The best. Would you let, if now you have daughters, if you have a son, would you let him play? Uh, if he can, if he can, uh, be tough enough to play with his sisters. <laughs> Maybe your your daughters will be the athletes in the family. Dude, my nearly two-year-old is, like, if I can make an early investment in, like, a futures bet on Olympians, uh, I don't know what she's going to do, but she's going to wear the red, white, and blue somewhere. Uh, and if, it's, if she doesn't want to do that, then great. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I've seen some shit that leads me to believe she's special. She might have the, ge- the long family genes. She's a freak show. <laughs> You know, I think of you often because I drive down Waukegan Road in Deerfield to go pick up my son. Yep. I go by Deerfield High School, and every time I go by it, my kids all went there. Every time I go by it, I'm like, that's where they kicked Kyle Long off the field. Then I went out there to do a workout, and I got kicked off the field. See, we are in a unique uh, unique fraternity here. I forget. It was like 2014, maybe. It might have been mm-hmm. before my rookie year or before my second year. I was just looking to get a workout in, and I lived right over there, uh, uh, you know, off Town Line Road, I guess. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, I guess it would be Town Line Road, right by Deerfield High School. So I'd go yep. over there, work out, and I was like eight gassers into my test, and I had like two left. And that's when I first got the – 
I saw somebody walk across the field and they're like, you need to get out of here. I said, I have one left. And they started talking. I just fucking took off. I was like, I'm going to run this last one. And then my final one, I ran to the car. (laughs) So I was running. It was during COVID. Yep. And so I was doing a lot of stuff from home. I go over there. It's like six in the morning and I'm running the suicides. Yep. Kendall Gill put this 60, 40 workout. I'm like, I'm going to go do it. And I'm running and this guy, Hey, you got to get off the field. I said, dude, I got four sprints left. I'm not very fast. Just let me finish him. He walked away. Next thing I know, there's two police cars waiting for me. Stop it. Two police cars. That is unbelievable, dude. Like I understand children's safety and a guy like you, a creep like you hanging out at a football field, but no doubt two police cars, two police cars. And I walk off. The guy goes, uh, cap can't be here. Ah, he he called you by your name. That was the worst. The worst. I I just remember uh, that was kind of like the way I ingratiated myself with like Bears fans. I was like, yeah, I was working out of Deerfield. I got kicked off. Like, screw these guys. And everybody was like, yeah, here's his information. Call the guy. Like, (laughs) I remember. I I love the Bears fans, bro. Uh, Last thing, and I'll let you go. So Aaron Rodgers, I want to have dinner with Aaron Rodgers. Not because I was ever a Packer fan, because I was raised to hate the Green Bay Packers. But the dude strikes me as someone I just like to have a conversation with. Does not have anything to do with football. Have you ever spent any time around Aaron Rodgers? You root against him? Do you root for him? What was he like to compete on the same field with? I'm just going to call him 12. Uh, Mm -hmm. because that was the guy that I got to know extremely well from a short distance away. I mean, Uh when we were playing the Packers, when we were playing anybody, you you didn't leave the bench after the drive. But when you play the Packers, you play the, you know, Tom Brady led Patriots, you're up on the sideline with your knee on the sideline because Uh first off, he could throw a touchdown to Jordy Nelson now or Randall Cobb. Uh, or you could see an 11 play drive where a guy dissects it like an absolute Mayo Clinic surgeon. Um, and the respect I had for his game was extremely high when I played against him and he was as entertaining a player, um, as I played against, but he ripped our hearts out so much. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stand him when I played. And then when I retired, I was able to separate myself and have an appreciation for him as a player even more. Um, and then obviously now with social media and, and with, uh, quotes and everybody's got their opinions. I've got my opinions and he's got his. And sometimes uh, there's some things that make you scratch your head. And I think that's just part of uh, the year 2024 is you got more eyeballs in 4k and, and more yes. microphones in front of people. So you're going to find out more about these guys, Yeah, <laughs> you know, if they're in front of the camera and that's, that's really all I have to say about that. Yeah. He'd be a guy. If like, if you said he's interesting, Yes. He's interesting, Cap. Yes. He is definitely interesting. He's somebody that I would have loved to have blocked for, but there's definitely a lot of burning questions I have to ask. Him. Right. Like, I, if, like, if you said, dude, I'm in town, you're not going to believe it. I'm having dinner with Aaron Rodgers. Come with me. Dude, I would be in. Let's go. I walked up to him. So after the game one time, I walked up to – I was walking across the field to our tunnel, and he happened to be walking by, and he gave me a – the up head nod and i gave him the up head nod i said big fan he goes me he was like me too or same or something he gave me a wink and a finger and i was like that was cool yeah it's like (laughs) right he didn't call me by my name i don't think he knows who i am but he said he's a big fan so that was cool cool i like 75 right that was cool uh i think one time chris was chris was hanging out somewhere and god i'm gonna get in trouble for saying this but chris was hanging out somewhere doing an event he was doing like a meet and greet and i guess Mm -hmm. aaron Rodgers. it was at the super bowl Mm -hmm. chris has been to the super bowl many times but i think he wasn't playing in this one yep and chris was leaning over a bar middle of the day waiting for the business people to come in so they could show him where to go and he got slapped on the ass and he turned around it was aaron Rodgers. he's like big guy Chris had never met Aaron Rodgers. He was oh, like, wow. he was like, we all hate Aaron Rodgers because he beats us and you can't sack him and the ball's out. But it's stuff like that that makes you go like, he's just a he's just a guy and he may have some fucked up opinions and say some terrible things, but he's also got some interesting things to say. And he's also put together this body of work that you can't ignore. Uh, right. But it's the nature of 2024, Cap. It's, uh, people are getting to know each other a lot better. 
yeah, we're in a different place in society. And, I, and I'll leave you with this. You're not living in Chicago anymore, but you see it on social media. If you were like part of the Justin Fields cult, as I called them, or you were looking to Caleb Williams to come in and save the day, I never saw a more divisive topic among the fan base. And we're all supposed to be rooting in, in the end for the Bears to win. That's it. Yeah, there's uh, there's definitely a few parties. There's the people that it's fields or nothing. Uh, yep. And then there's people that are like, whatever it takes to win. Yep. Um, and then there's people that are like, Caleb Williams is the second coming of Christ, which is, yes. you know. And then there's some fringe groups, and I think you and I probably fall in the fringe groups. So it's like, yes. you know, uh, I liked Fields, but he, he didn't get the job done, in my opinion. Uh, I also think that there's some viable options at quarterback in the draft. So make the move. And it, it, like I said earlier, if you want to win Super Bowls in this National Football League, your best player needs to be your quarterback. Dude, you were one of my favorites to deal with, and I can't wait to get a chance to hang out with you when you're back in town or I'm in your area. <laughs> Love you, Cap. Thanks for having Love me. You, man. Have a great week. You're the best. More pizza incoming. My man. My man. I'll take care of you. Lou Malnati, buddy. You're great job, Cap. <laughs>